So in your regular calculus studies, you should already know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity and velocity is the derivative of displacement. In ve vector calculus, it works exactly the same. That is, if r, t, r with respect to t equals displacement, then r dot with respect to t equals v with respect to t, which is velocity, and r double dot with respect to t equals a with respect to t, which is acceleration. The big difference here is that these are dealing with them in multiple directions. That is, if your displacement vector is something like 3ti plus 4tj, it tells you the displacement of your particle at those times, both in the i direction and in the j direction. So for instance, at time 0, we'd have 0i and 0j. At time 1, we'd have 3 times 1, which is 3i, 1, 2, 3 and 4 times 1, which is uh, 4j, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the particle would be there. And then moving forward, we'd go another 3, so 6, 8, we'd be up here at 6 and 8, and again, we'd be at 9 and 12. And so it's telling us its displacement in two dimensions. Now, you should notice that you can see the distance from the origin by finding that length there, which is just the magnitude of that vector. So Displacement is one thing, it's giving us in i and j components, but we can also find the distance by finding um, the magnitude of our vector. So that is the magnitude of r with respect to t is equal to the distance. And similar, we can say that the magnitude of v with respect to t, it isn't the velocity, it's the speed. And finally, we don't really have a good word for this, but the magnitude of our acceleration, instead of giving us our acceleration in its i and its j components, or maybe even its k components, it's just going to give us its actual acceleration, its straight line acceleration in meters per second per second. So I'm going to do this question here, but I'm going to assume that you know how to differentiate. I'm not going to keep showing you how to differentiate. So here we have a function r with respect to t, something i, something j, and we're going to find the velocity at time t. Now that's just going to be equal to, so velocity at time t is going to be equal to r dot with respect to t, and that's going to be equal to whatever the derivative i plus whatever the derivative j. That's all done, finished. Um, what about the acceleration at time t? Well, that's going to be acceleration at time t, which is equal to um, v dot with respect to t. So now I can just find the derivative of velocity, and that'll give me acceleration. And finally, let's find the speed at time t. Now we know that speed is equal to the magnitude of velocity. So uh, velocity is uh, this thing here, right? So we can say speed is equal to the square root of the i component squared, so e to the t squared, plus the j component e to the 2t squared. Right? make that a little bit longer. Now you can probably simplify that a little bit and you get something that looks a little more like that. Um, now we probably should have units on at least the speed. Uh, you'd be told in the question. So this should probably say displacement with respect to time in um, meters and time in seconds. Which means that our speed would be in meters per second. All right, uh, let's do another one. All right, so I'm going to find the velocity, the speed, and the minimum speed of this particle. Now, these two are going to be really straightforward. Derivative here. So that's easy. Now, the uh, speed is going to be the magnitude of this. Now, it's at this point I realize that I can expand that, expand that, expand that, collect terms, make a nice little quad. And we get something that looks like this. That means that the speed is equal to the square root of all of that. And you can plug in t values and you'll find out the speed of our particle at any given time. Which brings us to part c, which is finding the minimum speed. Now, we want to know when this will be a minimum. Now, the whole thing will be a minimum when this is a minimum, right? The, if the square root's a minimum, then the thing inside would also have to be at a minimum value. 8t squared minus 20t plus 17, that's a quadratic. A quadratic like that, right? So if we knew the turning point, we'd know the minimum speed. Now, I don't know if it looks like that. probably looks something more like that. But in any case, that's what we want to do. We want to minimize 
Now you've got a lot of options open to you here. It's a quadratic, so you can find the turning point using negative b over 2a. You might be able to like complete the square and put it in a bracket x minus h squared plus k, and then it'll tell you the h and the k values. Uh, you might be able to do some calculus on it and find a stationary point. Uh, I'm just going to use like negative b over 2a. Now when I do that, I get a t value of 5 on 4, and it's important to note that that is the t value, the time at which the minimum speed occurs, not what the minimum speed is. To find out what the minimum speed is, I put my time of 5 on 4 back into this whole equation. Now when I do that, I land on an answer of 3 root 2 on 2. Now obviously you end up with a much larger number in there, then you simplify and that's what you get. Alright, there's our minimum speed here. Done. Alright, so this question is really the main event when it comes to vector calculus. Projectiles. Well, lots of questions have projectiles in them. So it's a question that's a little bit like this. Flat ground here, um, and the displacement of the object, it's moving across, so that's our flat ground I component, and it's sailing through the air and hitting the ground at some point. All right? And you can see that its J component is described by a parabola, whereas its I component is just steadily moving forward at 400 meters per second. All right, so we're gonna go through uh, four different things. First off, we wanna know the time it takes for this thing to hit the ground. Now, when it hits the ground, what do you know for sure? Well, if it's hitting the ground, you know its J component is equal to zero, right? It's not up in the sky, it's on the ground, and our J component there would be zero. So that's all we need to do to find the time to hit the ground. So here I am letting the J component equal zero, and if I solve that, I get T equals 100 or T equals zero. And that makes a lot of sense because it's a projectile, and at time zero it's touching the ground, but also at time 100 it's touching the ground, and that is my second answer. So my answer to time to hit the ground is 100 seconds. All right, this projectile is in the air for a long time. So my second question here is, what is the speed when this projectile hits the ground? Now we know that the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So if I had a velocity function, which I could easily find by finding the derivative of displacement, I could then find a speed function by finding the magnitude of that. So I have a speed function, and I know that it hits the ground at time 100 seconds. So if I sub 100 seconds into there, I'll know the speed when it hits the ground. Now we get an answer of uh, 100 root 41 meters per second, which is approximately 640 meters per second. This next part is where people might get lost, finding the maximum height. And you do it a little bit differently to what you might expect. Uh, now going in space here, right? Look at this point right here. Think of its velocity for a moment. It's not going up and it's not going down. It's like floating in midair. It's not going it's it's not going that way. It's not going that way. It's right there just for that instant. In other words, its velocity in the j component is equal to 0. It's not going up, it's not going down. It's still going across. It's still going across that way but it's not going up and it's not going down. Velocity in the J component is equal to zero. Velocity in the J, velocity in the J component. Velocity in the J component equal to zero. Velocity in the J component equals 500 minus 10 T J. So we can say that zero equals 500 minus 10 T when it's at its peak, not going up, not going down. And then we just solve that for T. Now you probably could have guessed T equals 50 was gonna be the answer because it took 100 seconds to hit the ground. But in more complicated scenarios, it's not going to be as clear cut as that. So you still need to understand that at its peak, a projectile's uh, velocity in the J component is zero. Important. Now, its initial speed is the last thing I'm going to find here. And if you stopped for a minute, you could probably just guess what the initial speed is, and you'll probably be right. But in any case, to find the initial speed, I'm going to sub in T equals zero into this speed equation that I created earlier. Surprise, surprise, when I do that, I get an answer of 100 root 41, or approximately 640 meters per second, which I think we have seen before. Now, this is a property of projectiles. If a projectile takes off from here and lands here, its initial velocity and its impact velocity are gonna be 
equal provided you don't do anything weird with it like add propulsion or something like that um okay that is our vector calculus displacement velocity acceleration we've taken a look at a pretty fancy thing here projectiles we're going to look at them in much greater depth in in future videos